This video will demonstrate the technique for laparoscopic removal of a massive gastric trichobezoar. A five-year-old female presented with pica, nausea, vomiting, foul-smelling diarrhea, and a palpable mass in the left upper quadrant. Upper GI series and endoscopy revealed the presence of a gastric trichobezoar. Pneumoperitoneum was established using a varus needle. A five millimeter umbilical port was inserted followed by a further two ports in the usual position for gastric surgery. The umbilical port was later upsized to 10 millimeters to facilitate introduction of the suture into the abdomen. A gastrotomy was created and extended using electrocautery. The trichobezoar immediately came into view, occupying the entirety of the stomach. Using two graspers, the trichobezoar was gently manipulated out of the stomach and into the peritoneal cavity ensuring that the tail of hair extending into the duodenum was also carefully removed. A key aspect of removing the trichobezoar from the stomach is to peel the gastric wall away from the trichobezoar, rather than to pull the trichobezoar from the stomach, much like peeling a banana. Patience and careful manipulation at this stage will ensure the size of the gastrotomy and hair spillage into the peritoneum is minimized. The trichobezoar was placed into a laparoscopic bag, again to help minimize hair spillage into the peritoneum, as attention turned to closure of the gastrotomy. The gastrotomy was closed using a 3-0 V-lock suture in a single layer. The V-lock suture has a loop on the end, visible here, that allows for omission of formal knot tying, thereby saving time. The rear-facing barbs on the suture ensure a tight knot and a secure suture line. To finish the suture line, two bites were taken in reverse direction. The suture line was examined and covered with an omental patch. Once the gastrotomy was closed, the 11 by 11 by 5 cm specimen was extracted using a 5 cm fan and steel incision, which was closed in layers. Local anesthetic was infiltrated into the wound, and bilateral transversus abdominis plane blocks were placed to ensure adequate postoperative analgesia. The patient tolerated the procedure well and had an uneventful postoperative course.